So session one is special to ADIO. We want to give you a little bit of an overview of progress and challenges from the front line, as Celeste had said earlier. You're going to want to hear more from every single element, probably, that I throw into my PowerPoint here. And the good news is you'll get that today from session one, two, three, and four. Uh, I am Linda Reinstein, the co-founder of the Asbestos Disease Awareness. Let's get started. So let's take it from the top, as uh, uh, Fossey would say in dance. Three facts. Let's write these down, and I'm going to test uh, some of our key industry people on this call later on today. Asbestos is a carcinogen. There is no safe or controlled use, and nearly 70 countries have banned asbestos. There'll be a test at the end of this presentation. So ADO has been very clear since we started 18 years ago. We've always been on a dual track. We always know that there has to be two ways to get this job done. So I believe that the light at the end of that tunnel represents a ban. That's what I, that's what I hold close, is hope and knowledge. How are we doing our work? Let's think in four prongs. Education, regulation, legislation, and litigation. Not for civil justice, although I support that. It's about our legal action against EPA. I'm not going through each element of this uh, timeline with my brief time, but all of this will be available on the ADO side. I want you to take away that over 100 years ago, we knew that asbestos exposure would cause suffering, disease, and death. Over 100 years ago, what have we done wrong? We know that labor came to the front of the line to try to protect their workers and families. We know that Dr. Salikoff and others in the mid-50s and 60s recognized the biological effects, obviously. We had our record high at 79. It's hard to believe that 800,000 tons of metric tons of asbestos was so-called consumed. What does that mean? It could be in your home, schools, buildings, cars, elsewhere. EPA tried to ban it in 89. It was overturned in 91. And 2016 is when we finally signed into law, President Obama signed into law, the Lautner Chemical Safety Act. We cheered. We thought we were done. No, I'm not reading this. You can breathe easy. I wanted you to reference the fact that over 50 years ago, these are the different steps EPA has, has taken, as well as CPSC. These are the regulatory actions and observations and, and, and actions that they've taken. And where are we today? Well, I can tell you that the chloroalkali industry in 2011, this is an ADO internal slide that I made with my autistic intern who loved numbers. We started going back through USGS data, and we wanted to see where was asbestos being consumed. And you can see that the construction industry got it back in the 2007. And who took over? The chloroalkali industry, and you'll hear more from Dr. Castleman, they have become the largest, or what's called the primary importer and user, of raw asbestos for uh, asbestos diaphragms. And there is, yes, safer, affordable technology. So where are we with policy? If I tell you that legislation is one of our prongs, take a look here. 2016, we have had, since 2016, we have had four Allen Reinstein banned asbestos now acts. Four. That is three too many for me as a mesothelioma widow. We are continuing to fight for change legislatively and with the agency. And this, as you will hear later on today, must end. We have all the science we need. Using our humor and our knowledge, this is one of our latest uh, cartoons. We do these cartoons and this Africa cartoons, and John Curtis is a co dear colleague and Themba worked from South Africa. We do cartoons so we can reduce any barrier to language. We want people in Brazil to be able to look at that and see on their books it says lies, spin, and BS. We want them to recognize that the industry infiltrates conferences like ours. We want to hold them all accountable. The playbook has changed. We have the ball. Here's where we are with facts. There's always reporters that come on and they want to know what's new. It's very hard to talk about what's new because, frankly, it's a 100-year-old problem. This is the latest data I pulled last night. You can see in 2021 that the imports uh, uh, equaled uh, 100 metric tons, and they came in from Brazil and China. This year, 2022, from January to July, we have allowed more than 100. We have allowed 141 metric tons. We are on target. We've already beat 2021, and I guarantee you, we will, we will, this will be a year we will hope to forget as far as raw asbestos imports for the chloralkali industry. The good news is the EPA issued an economic analysis for their proposed rule, 
and its risk management. You'll hear much more from Bob Sussman about part one and the other elements, part two. Uh, I hope you get a sharp pencil, but we make all this available on our website so it becomes easier. But I want you the takeaway today is look at this list. We have three companies and there are now only eight plants. They closed in Niagara Falls using asbestos diaphragms for the chloralkali industry. It's reprehensible and there is non-asbestos technology. In fact, Bob and I are doing research on a new project. We know since uh, Senator Merkley held his legislative hearing for Arban, we know we have the industry documents. We know that they're transitioning. We know they can do it and we know they can do it about two to three years. What's the, what's the problem? Dr. Castleman won't hold back this afternoon. When Earl and I traveled around Louisiana, it was gut-wrenching. It's gut-wrenching. We have people that live near these communities and we know from the EPA economic analysis, we know that these fence line communities in a three mile radius have an elevated rate of cancer compared to the rest of the population. We have those clips. If you want more, let me know. I'll give you my data from their economic, it's a 200 page report. So here's our cartoon and it's not funny but it drives its Earl daughter's photograph in the background. Young girl, daddy, don't they know their chemicals can make us sick and even kill us? Yes, my child, they do. Environmental racism is a very real thing. It is, and we're gonna end it. So going back to how we do what we do, yes, in education is a huge component to our work. And thanks to our sponsors, our speakers, our leadership, our donors, volunteers, we're able to host congressional staff briefings. In fact, we just did our eighth. And on this slide, you can see seven of our speakers, some of them presenting today. We prevent, we develop prevention materials, as, as Sean said. You can find the latest and greatest. We did investigative study state by state, so you can see how many people have died in various states. And our research against the chloralkali uh, plants and industry continues. And yes, it will be covered by the media. Regulations, where are we? It's tough, think dual tracks. We applaud the EPA for what they're doing. They have worked so hard. Those career staffers don't give up a second of trying to protect public health. But it's not easy when you have industry fighting you. And sometimes it's both sides of the aisles industry. Uh, Tosco was signed into law. In fact, Emily and I had the deep honor of watching President Obama sign that law, uh, in the bill into law, and we thought we were on a pathway, a glide path to get this done. We were wrong, and so were many people here in the audience and who will speak today. So yes, we were able to get asbestos prioritized. Bob is gonna go into this in detail. Yes, there has been a risk evaluation for asbestos and risk management has been done, and there is a proposed rule. Bob will tell you more. But I want you to see six years is what we spent and we're not close to being done. So, okay, talk to me about legislation. Yes, happy to. We've had, uh, as you saw on the slides, we've had four Alan Reinstein banned asbestos now acts, and we've had many banned bills before that as well. But on this slide, it'll, t it'll show a picture on the left is the International Association of Firefighters, Dr. Wu, Senator Merkley, myself. This was the first legislative hearing. So if you're curious about what we're saying and what industry is saying, I'd be happy to send you a transcript from that hearing. But our bill will ban all six fibers. It will ban Winchite and Richterite if passed. There is a transition plan. We do use the AHERA definition, which is commonly uh, used by other agencies. We don't need to perfect a definition. We need to stop the imports that are coming in. And there's actually, uh, Senator Merkley has added a line item to develop an educational outreach program. So those are all strong things. Litigation, before Alan got sick, I didn't know anything about litigation in the sense of why to sue, who should sue, how do you do it? And it's not something I e easily uh, embrace in the beginning, but I've learned. The lawyers have taught me. Bob Sussman has taught me. You have to have a legislative and a legal strategy or you can sit there and wait. I'm not waiting anymore. I'm done. I'm gonna be 67s. My hourglass is spinning to the bottom. Bob's gonna tell you more about the three cases that we filed and the ones that we won. And in closing, I just want you to know that yes, the cancer moonshot is here. If President Biden wants to sit down with us, we're happy to have that discussion. We can start preventing cancers today by passing the Allen Reinstein Ban Asbestos Now Act and or helping the EPA do their regulatory work. It is time to stop the imports and use. We're done. Thank you for my time. <laughs>